Welcome back to Math Mini Lesson 6th Graders. My name is Sarah and let's jump into Lesson 2, which is Multiplying with Decimals. Our aim is not only to review, but also to solve to answer multiplication word problems with decimals. This is what your teachers are going to look for to help demonstrate that you know how to do these skills and master our objectives for today. And just like in all our lessons, I like to use solve as our method for really showing up thinking and making sure that you can see our process throughout the entire problem. So with that said, let's jump into today's lesson. Before we jump into this model for today's lesson, I just want to very quickly review what you probably already know from elementary school, multiplying with decimals. So just some very quick notes that will help you for today. As you're multiplying, make sure that you are um, at first, just multiplying them as if they're whole numbers. Just think of them. What if that decimal didn't exist? So for example, in this one, what if I just had 125 times 21? And I'm just going to multiply it as if that was what I had. Um, and when I multiply, I forget my little placeholder. I'm just using traditional multiplication here. I thought about using lattice. I actually like lattice a lot. But I thought traditional would be quicker. So I'm just going to multiply again, pretending that they're whole numbers. For part two, I'm going to count the number of digits that are behind the decimal and my factors. So take a look here. These are my factors right here. And I'm going to count how many digits are behind the decimal, to the right of the decimal. Well, 2R. So in my product, I have to make sure that two of the numbers are also to the right of the decimal. And this will tell me where to put the decimal. So you're gonna watch me as I'm working out some problems with multiplying decimals. I'm gonna do the same manner. Just pretend the decimal doesn't exist, just multiply. Any algorithm way that you feel most confident in, and then we're gonna do that counting. You're gonna count all the numbers that are behind the decimal in the factor and you're going to ensure that the same thing will be true in your product so that is what we're going to do so that we can get accurate answers let's see it in action using solve again to just think through the problem um, and this problem has one of my favorite names in it the name sarah Sarah's baking cookies and the recipe calls for 7,500 cups of sugar for every batch. So every time she has a batch, she's putting in 75 uh, hundredths of a cup. And for every batch of a dozen cookies, so every batch is a dozen, I know a dozen equals 12. Sarah is planning to bake four and a half batches. So four full batches and then a half of a batch. Um, so how many cookies does she make if she makes four and a half batches? and how many cups of sugar will she need? So what is the problem asking? My own words, how many cookies does Sarah make? That's the first thing they wanna know. And how much sugar does she need if she's gonna make all those cookies? All right, so I highlighted some facts in the problem. I'm gonna list them out again, just to make sure I have them all. We know that she uses 75 hundredths of a cup of sugar in every single batch. We know that a batch has 12 cookies and we know that she makes four and a half batches. But look at how I'm writing it as a decimal because that is what our skill is for today. Instead of writing it as a fraction, I wrote it as four and five tenths, uh, but they are both equivalent to each other. And so what is my plan? There's, there's two things I'm looking for here. Um, first, I wanna find out how many cookies she has. So I'm gonna take the four and five tenths batches and I'm gonna multiply that. I'm gonna multiply the 12 cookies in every batch times 4.5 batches. Because I know there's 12 in every single one. And to figure out how much sugar she needs, I'm going to take the 4 and 5 tenths patches and I'm going to multiply that by 75 hundredths of a cup of sugar. So I'm going to do two multiplication problems. So let's see it in action. Let's put both our plans into action, starting with the number of cookies. We know that there are a dozen cookies, so that's 12 in each batch and we're going to multiply this by four and a half or four and five tenths and just like we said before we're going to ignore this decimal and just pretend what if we were just multiplying 12 times 45 i'm going to do this using standard notation 
standard multiplication. Just multiplying 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Put a 0 as a placeholder. 4 times 2 is 8. And 4 times 1 is 4. So when I add them up, I get 540. And whoa, 540 cookies? That's amazing. So what are we forgetting, Math Marvels? Oh, we are forgetting the decimals. So in our factors, we have one number behind a decimal, which means in our product, we much, must also have one number behind a decimal, which means we have actually 54 cookies. So that is our answer for the first part. Sarah actually makes 54 cookies. So let's put that in for the first part. And let's go to the second part. And the second question was how much sugar will she need to make four and a half batches of cookies? So again, our multiplication sentence is going to be 75 hundredths times four and five tenths batches. And this time I'm gonna use, you know what, I'm gonna use lattice. I like lattice a lot. I know it's not a favorite of many parents, but I know lots of kids like using it, so we're going to use that. And notice I'm just writing the two numbers as if the decimal didn't exist, as if they were whole numbers. And we're just going to multiply what's inside, starting with the top right, 5 times 4 is 20. Bottom right, 5 times 5 is 25. Top left, 7 times 4 is 28. And bottom left, 7 times 5 is 30. Five. And now I can just add up these sections, these diagonals, to get my number. So starting with the bottom one is just 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 plus 8 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Carry a 1 plus 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So 3,375. Holy smokes, that is so much sugar. Ha ha ha. Remember, we need to count the number of digits to the right of the decimal. So in our factor, in 7500s, we have two digits behind the decimal. And in 4 and 5 tenths, we have one. So all together, that's three digits to the right. So let's do the same thing to our product. And here we have it. We have our answer. Three and 375 thousandths cups of sugar. Big takeaways from this part as we're multiplying. Remember, just treat it as if they were whole numbers and just multiply in whatever method normally works for you. And then we're going to actually count how many digits in the factor are about to the right of the decimal and make sure that this matches in our product. Great job, Math Marbles.